For July the 10th, 2015, for July the 10th, 2015, we talk about the Zero Escape 3 announcement, her story, and we ask you what you think is in store for the future of games. Welcome to the 111th level. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Dennis, welcome back. Thank you. I am now worldlier and better traveled. Nice, nice. You got to meet uh, Geolaw, right? Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, and his uh, his whole little family that he's got going on there. Uh, we we were in I guess part of our travels. And, well, I don't know if I can tell people where he lives. Um, <laughs> we were his safety is compromised. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> red team go, red team go. I'm sorry, I'm running an operation against Geo Law. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We've got him. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll I'll censor yeah, it out we, no matter we, what. But well, I, I'll I'll uh, I'll IM him later and see if he cares. Uh, but um, we we met up with him and, and his little family that he's going on, and while we were passing through his city, and uh, it was it was really fun to just hang out and and talk. Meet uh, he's got a little kid now, so that was fun, uh, and it was just generally a really cool time. So yeah. yeah. Hey, Gio Law, if you're listening to this, it was awesome to meet you in person. Yeah, this is, this is Jeffrey Lawton from the uh, from the comments, usually, um, in the multiplayer. And, uh, like, he's you know, Gio Law from podcasts. Like, he's a, he's a very prolific uh, uh, both participant in a lot of different uh, podcast communities and also uh, runs a show himself. It's uh, Adventures in Podacy, where he does a podcast yeah. about other podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun to meet like li- like listeners or other like podcast people. It's really that's that's kind of like been one of the nice things for me about this whole venture is like getting to meet really cool people like that. Yeah, no, it's even better when they turn out to be really really cool. Yeah, so it kind of uh, sucks when they turn out to be psychopathic killers. <laughs> well, nobody came to our meetup, David. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nobody left the meetup. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Let's see here, Dennis. What did you miss? Last week, I read some poetry and I apparently made a bunch of people very happy by doing that. (laughs) So that was that. that, that, that I have not listened to that episode yet. So I I look forward to it. Yeah, it was it was good. Murph Murph submitted a question. Let's see here. Is there any other like remaining business? You you, you would think that we would do this off the air, but no, no, I'm going to do it on the air in this section. (laughs) Yeah. Forgive me. It's uh, recapping so. last podcast to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So then I talked about her story, but a little bit like it's I hadn't really played it, but now I have. Uh, oh, wait, you're going to get to that part later. It's good. Wait, <laughs> wait, okay. So, so, well, I'll save it for then, but I'm curious to know if that's a game that would be fun to play, quote unquote, co op in terms of just like experiencing it with someone else and kind of guessing together at what to search next. Uh, l- long answer is yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> What's the short answer? Uh huh. <laughs> That's more <laughs> letters. Two syllables. Yeah, I said. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was gonna, I was gonna make try to make it like a one syllable utterance, like huh? But yeah. Oh well, yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> let's see here. Uh, forgive me if I clear my throat and sniff a little bit. I think I might be coming down with a cold. Oh, I, no. we, we recorded for four hours uh to do the la noir uh episode of watch out for fireballs and i went back and edited it thinking like oh yeah so this is this is going to be good this is going to be a fun episode and then i was listening to it and i realized i am sniffing and clearing my throat through this, through this entire thing so i had to go through and not quite listen in real time but like watch the waveform for times where i did it and i don't oh, no. i don't know if i'm gonna do that for the show <laughs> no do not do that for the show yeah, so I'm going to try and be as off mic as possible when I do that, so I don't gross people out. It's going to be the opposite of the poetry. <laughs> you'll just you'll hear. Fuck you'll, it, you'll, we're you'll, doing it live. Yeah, yeah. you'll hear periodically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> and then, like as soon as I really really easy, people are going to put up a GoFundMe like let's cure coal. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's the Save Coal Foundation. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I just, I just imagine some old white dude like trying to like keep on putting his arm around you, and you're like shrug him off, like try to get out of frame. He's like, just for one dollar a day, you can feed. Dude, get off me! No, feed Jer- one coal. Jerry Lewis, go away! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't invite you into this house, How Jerry did you Lewis. Get here? Vampire Jerry Lewis. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, no, if he was a vampire, then, you know, not inviting him into the house would, you know, fix the problem. Oh, mm-hmm. he's a reverse vampire. He's a daywalker. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, so he can enter your house until you invite him in, in which case he has to leave. Yes, yes. He he, he thrives he, he on has the... commitment issues. He doesn't <laughs> like to get too close in friendships. He thrives on the light of Blaven. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was terrible. Don't reward that. So we've got the usual kind of show in store for you. We got the brief, the the, the multiplayer, and the grind. I see no reason why we shouldn't do the brief. The brief, where we talk about uh, video game news that it is as it is happening around us, like we're in the trenches at the Psalm. Uh, guys, do you have a story that you want to volunteer? Anybody, step right up. I've got one that that excites and perplexes me. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's been announced that Telltale's The Walking Dead is going to be performed live during San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, they're having a bunch of the original members of, of the cast come and, and, like, do a live reading. This is the original game? Yeah, the well, the, the Telltale game, yes. Yeah, that's one. Okay. So was, do you was, just was, get was to the... shout at them which option to take? <laughs> well, that's the perplexing piece. Like, yeah, how do you choose? Do you go back? Like, they've got to have statistics on what was the most common answer. Um, so do you just go by that? Or, like, how, how do you decide? Wouldn't the most common answer most likely end up being say nothing? Well, the other thing is some of the choices will remove some of the characters from the table reading, too. So... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There'll, there'll be a dude with a with a taser, you know, sitting. Part 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 of me thinks like that that has to have been done before, right? Like either with some kind of app or like a bar trivia uh, machine, uh, sans the wing sauce. Um, <laughs> you know, where it's been like you know you're watching a live performance, and then as you're going along, there is a prompt where you press a button or two, and that actually changes the outcome of the story. Like that has to have been done. I mean, they have it in like college classes, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you, uh, where, whereas like you, you take turns with everybody taking the the remote, so that you can uh, um, skip class without it knowing, and you still register it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like uh, they do that during the debates with like photo sentiment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they have one guy who has all of it. Everybody's like, "Man, I need to <laughs> I need to skip this debate. I'm really hungover." <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, the, the so the character or the actors, uh, the characters that are coming with the characters that are having their actors come um, mm-hmm. and perform are Clementine, uh, Lee, Kenny, Lily, Carly, Andy, and the event will also include the character of Larry, Lily's father. Hmm. So I don't know if you can suss out from that what path they will take, and I don't know how far through the the actual plot they're going to present. Yeah, like if it's just going to be in episode one, because I I'm not sure the entire thing would fit into one night. Well, um, you well, need at I least mean, like an afternoon. Yeah, that season's like ten hours. I wonder if they're going to try and lip sync it and like do it to the actual game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I mean they're the I actors; they can just bad. say the say the lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It, it also begs the question of how they'll do some of the higher octane action. Yeah, because um, yeah. you can't exactly. Well, you can cut someone's uh, arm off on stage, but the uh, you know the amount of zombie fighting and stuff that goes on in the game uh, might be hard to replicate. Yeah. Like I so said, I, well, guy me... off to the side with a cattle prod. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of said it was going to be a reading. But as I as I look through the article again, I'm not sure that it clarifies whether it's going to be just a reading, which would be easier to uh, execute, or if it'll be like an actual full on play. Yeah, like a performance. I don't know. But I'm I'm very curious to see how they do the choice uh, part of it. Yeah. Well, we'll never find out because there are probably people already lining up for it. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Huh. I've got a story. What do you got? Yep. Yeah, so this is something pretty exciting. It's something that I didn't expect to uh, to ever happen, I suppose. So we've been talking a lot about uh, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. We're doing that for Watch Out for Fireballs. Uh, Jala has been on talking about visual novels, um, specifically that one and her disappointment with the iOS port. Um, and uh, Dennis, you know, you've been talking about uh, trying to get uh, Dagan Rupp off of me. Like, this is this is currently in the air. And I, I really like Virtue's Last Reward, which is the second game in that series. But it didn't really do 
that well, either in Japan or over here. And it's it was pretty much a foregone conclusion um, after that game's release from the creator that there would be no third installment to kind of like wrap things up. It's not really a spoiler to say that it ends on a cliffhanger because that's kind of what these things do. Um, whereas here just like a week and a half ago or something like that, uh, sometime last week, um, at some kind of anime convention in, uh, in, in LA access games, the company that, uh, kind of makes the, uh, you know, cr- creates and publishes these games here in the United States. Um, the director and writer, uh, for that series made an appearance during a panel, um, and aired, or showed a uh, a trailer, which was just a black screen with some voiceover and Zero Escape 3 on there, kind of just announcing that uh, Zero Escape 3 would be coming out uh, sometime in 2016 for the uh, for the Vita and 3DS. Nice. I know, right? So was there an image? I saw someone tweet an image that was shown as well. Yeah, yeah, they had like some uh, so some really basic character design, just like a, like a still, but it was a really bad a really bad image taken with like a cell phone camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it'd be a bad sign if you announce a visual novel without you know any visuals. There were some, but it was mostly words on the screen. It was very like he, he, so. It was just a novel. Yeah, he, like he he came out. It was it was nonsensical words flashed up there, which. To be fair, that is also what the trailer for the original 999 was. Um, kind of oh, like okay. nonsensical words and phrases, but they all kind of like so kind linked, of like throwback. Yeah, linked back to the theme and stuff like that. Um, but cool. you know, he, like he he came out and he uh, kind of said, "Yes, this has entered development, so it is very early on." I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have a whole lot. Uh, they brought in the writer for Danganronpa to kind of uh, uh, contribute to this. And he made a comment saying he knows what happens in the story, he knows the ending, and it's going to be the craziest ending yet, which is saying something. So, so we'll <laughs> see. Is this um, is this like a trilogy, or is this just the third one in a series? Uh, I think that it is lined up to be a trilogy. I don't know for sure, okay. but like with the cliffhanger that Virtue's Last Reward ends on. They said, yes, there's one more that we have planned for this story, but they may leave a door open for more if this one performs, which I kind of get the sense that this is just a kind of like a Tinkerbell (laughs) being being resurrected by enough people clapping their hands. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't remember that. Hopefully that doesn't do bad things to the to the story. I mean, hopefully. I mean, hopefully they, they can execute on it. But yeah. I don't know. Is that a pun? Oh, kind of. <laughs> Man, I want to play it again so much. It's so good. It is. It is a it is, yeah. Those games are 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 really really good. Um, if you don't play them on iOS, I think that you need to have the puzzles. But that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, Ben. You got a story? I have two stories, mm. but they're both small. Um. So one story is they kind of announced a release date for the Android Fallout Shelter. They said sometime next month, so sometime in August. But that is via Twitter, not via official statement. So take that with a grain of salt. And the other small story is they're making an update to The Witcher. And so uh, they're fixing a few of the inventory management things, and they're adding a few places to store items in the game map. Hmm. So Why would they update the original Witcher? (laughs) <laughs> so the witcher 3 excuse me hey hey ben listen to this yeah what am i banging a pen against um i don't know a copy of the what? witcher 3 for uh ps4 oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I, was, I was talking with allison and it's like i don't know what to play next what should i play play the witcher okay so i went to gamestop and bought it <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> nice <laughs> so so yeah um so so wait so the the, there were inventory management problems and so they solved that by kind of putting some some chests out in the world or so uh so it's basically uh just kind of fine-tuning the menu so uh one of the complaints that i think some of the players uh made was that uh one of the tabs has like uh alchemy potions and like letters and notes but it doesn't really keep track of what you've read and what you haven't read. Um, it like it does keep track of what's new and what isn't new. But as soon as you scroll over it, it doesn't have that anymore. So they're like mm-hmm. fading out stuff that you've already read. So it just helps you better manage the new things you've picked up versus the things that you've already addressed. And um, there's another thing where if you're looking for a specific potion, they'll highlight 
what items you need to get from merchants when you're talking with them. No. Oh. So just kind of small, fine-tuning things like that. Nice. Yeah. You almost never see those kind of usability um, tweaks happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, it seems like they're doing a lot of functional and kind of narrative updates to the game kind of for free long after the game itself is coming out. They're so like, they're straight up giving out story DLC, right? Like actual missions for you to yeah. run? Yes. Uh, yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, that's really good to hear. Like CD Projekt, I, I I kind of have a lot of admiration for them based on based on everything yeah. I'm reading about them and hearing from you about how they're handling all of that. Like it was already you, a good game and they're not afraid to make it better. Have you opened the, the game yet? Oh, no, no. I can, I can open it on air if you want. Well, do you want me to do an unboxing? Yeah, do Wait, let me let me breathe yeah, really it. heavily. Just... <sighs> Got to get by yeah. uh, my leather man. Uh... <sighs> Okay, I'm going to make the cut. <sighs> um, <laughs> um, so it's the regular, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, and the shrink wrap is off. Uh, it doesn't appear to be visually different. Uh, and there's a bunch of cards inside. Um, what's that? It appears that the uh, that the clips that hold the manual into the case have broken off, have become busted. I'm gonna knock it a half a point for that. Actually, that that is true. Yeah, the clips nice the nice. clips are broken, but it's fine. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go on to do the bit that you were just slowly destroying it as you open it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this pancake doesn't taste like anything at all. <laughs> um, David, you got a story? Sure, I've got a small one. Um, apparently, the um, CEO of Sega spoke to uh, <laughs> Fa- Fa- Famitsu. Yeah, Famitsu, uh, the, the the biggest uh, gaming magazine in Japan. Okay, um, and has apologized for uh, to gamers for uh, betraying their trust. Oh, with Sonic Boom uh, for the past ten years. <laughs> oh, so it stretches back. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is he is he for real? Like I like the, the the headlines that I saw were about Sonic Boom, but really? Um one of the quotes, but looking back, they've there've been some titles that partially betrayed that trust in the past 10 years. <laughs> like okay. all of them. Wow. Cuz I was going to say if you're apologizing for the last 10 years, that means that you were either releasing games knowing they're bad or you just realized that you've been making this mistake for the last 10 years. No, 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 no. No, okay. Um, yeah, there, there's there's a number of uh, pretty good quotes. Um, I, I like, if we can make a title with proper quality, I believe there's a good chance for it to do well, even in the West. Yeah. For players that like to play Japanese games. So you heard it here first. Games with good quality are likely to do well. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, you guys, similarly... Uh, for this reason, we'd like to win back the customer's trust and become a brand once again. Whoa. That is a... Just r- become a brand? <laughs> we, yeah. We, at some point, we stopped being... Like, they let all the trademarks lapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are little imposter segas popping up all over the place. Huh. Yeah. Well, to, to become a brand is a little like, you know, having be, becoming a religion. Like, how many how many people have to acknowledge that you're a brand before you're really a brand? <laughs> wow. That is, uh, like, a, at any point, does he say, we done fucked up? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think that was off the mic. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm just imagining that with, like, the real time, like, translation headsets. And it just says, we, 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 we done fucked up. And then, like, three seconds later, the translator says, we done fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, I saw um, I, I saw him say something along the lines of, I guess I guess that's what it was. Was, like, the, like they, they said, uh, oh, no, there, like, there was another announcement that he made probably in the same thing, which was, yes, we're going to have a substantial game announcement at TGS. As if to cool. say we haven't done a substantial game announcement in a while. Wow. That's funny. Well, in some ways, so, yeah, this is kind of interesting because, you know, he makes reference to, uh, you know, how well known um, 
they were in the 1990s and that they've sort of coasted on reputation since then. So I do think it's it's kind of interesting to see them, you know, I don't know, may, you know, have at least enough self-knowledge to look back and be like, this is when we actually made good games yeah. and we want to do that again. I mean, the, the, they're... <laughs> If there's something that you don't want to punish somebody for by laughing at them for as much as we're as much as I'm joking about it, um, the the last thing you want to you know really kind of like hit somebody hard for is like an actual admission, you know, like oh yes, oh yeah, this the, yeah. This, this 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 is true self knowledge. It's just it's it's absurd to hear anybody of any kind of business stature say something so frank that everybody pretty much believes, and like yeah. You know, in in one sense, they kind of they kind of have to not um, acknowledge that they knew it uh, as far as it goes. I'm wondering what makes now different, actually. Like, why now are they saying this? He he walks off the stage and is like, "Yes, I found the perfect way to get their hopes up, so we can crush them with another bad Sonic game." And like, check under your seat. We have the Dreamcast too, shipping to KB stores <laughs> tomorrow. Wait, oh, whoa, that's a uh, huh. When their KB 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 toys is gone. Whew. then where do we ship all those There's Dreamcast 2 guys? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I I know. I mean, it does seem like I... Okay, not not to make another kind of thing at their expense, but I didn't realize because uh, why would I care, but apparently they didn't come to E3. Right. And I guess the, you know, the whole canceling of uh, oh, Silent, Silent Hills... Uh, so it, it does seem like maybe there's been a number of uh, recent things that have sort of hit them harder than. Yeah. Um, so, Silent Hills was, yeah, was a different company. That that, that was Konami, really? not Sega. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No. There 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 has to be something else. I mean, like Sonic Boom was a really big egg in their face. Like even more so. Like very very few people will come out and defend that. And like that is actually like the fact that they release that in the state that they released it if anything that i read about it is true is uh definitely let's say insulting to anybody who would still buy those games now but yeah i i saw bits of the cartoon while i was uh on vacation they they somehow made sonic's voice more annoying i don't understand (laughs) more annoying than Um, urkel more annoying than the original (laughs) cartoon yes more annoying than jaleel white (laughs) so (laughs) huh i don't know (laughs) Sega is a company that I have a lot of fondness for. Like it very much did define my childhood in a very in a very real way. Like I was a Sega kid, uh, and for for as much as admitting that makes me a garbage person, um, then you know so be it. But I you know it's it's always been sad to me to see them in the state that they're in, and in the state that they have been since you know January of two thousand one. Multiplayer. Now it is time for multiplayer, the section of the show where we ask you, the listeners, a question. Uh, Dennis, what is the question you ask the nice people? Yeah, I asked them kind of, you know, what what are you hoping to see a couple of years out in video games? So uh, we we talk a lot on the show about how we're in a golden age right now, and I think it's it's very true. Uh, but there's always things that could be better, and there's always new things that could be exciting. So what are you what are you hoping? Uh, to see in the next five years, you know, we're kind of we we the new generation is here, right? Mm-hmm. So all the hardware stuff is known. So as as that evolves, what are you hoping to see? Yeah, I'll pick up with uh, with Roop's uh, response here first. I hope the modern systems or games won't have smell o vision or shock day extreme. I don't know what that is. Um, hell, I don't even want VR to become a thing. Sure, Nintendo is going to come up with its with its gimmings. Well, gimm- oh, gimmicks. There we go. Uh, but those won't last. <laughs> uh, uh, all you uh, really need is a lag-free input system, be it keyboard or a pad or, or a pad-like thing, in a game worthy of playing. People want to be immersed in games, uh, but many don't realize that the comfort of not being in the games makes them entertaining. Uh, how many? Uh, how many have or will play Skyrim or any sandbox game using the ah, it's so realistic and fun, Virtuix Omni? I don't know what the Virtuex <laughs> Omni is. Is it I th- I know, using the oh, treadmill? Ahead. Yeah. I know at one point they hooked it up to a treadmill that where walking on the treadmill would translate to walking in Skyrim. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did. They did do that. I saw one with uh, saw them do it with uh, Minecraft as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my gosh. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't know. It's, it, it, it needs to be different kinds of experiences than, than, than what we're used to. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Porting, porting yeah. X game into virtual reality will not work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know, to me, games is storytelling. Um, and I feel like when you read a book, it doesn't come with like a sword so that you can act out the fight <laughs> scenes. I mean, that's that's kind of the thing that the Wii showed us, right? A little bit, like the way to play Zelda wasn't swinging your arm around; it was to sit as stock still as possible and just flick your wrist. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I feel, I feel like I, I don't think there's no place for the motion controls because, um, you know, if nothing else, Johann Sebastian Joust single handedly justifies motion controls. <laughs> But um, I feel like having them be a focus just kind of misunderstands uh, what games are. And I I would say almost even, you know, kind of what people care about in stories and entertainment and life. Yeah. I don't know. I never want to say never, but I think that it is it's weird that every different company has their own headset and i've talked about this a million times before but like it is it's it's shocking to me like is this the time where i just stop caring about a thing that is happening in the industry Mm -hmm. like 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 is this is this the point where i just kind of like pull over to the side of the road and get out and say nope i'm fine here i'm fine staring (laughs) at my rectangle (laughs) yeah i i know i yeah, it's it's hard so, to say. Like, so I, I don't see two but... retro video game podcasts. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> retro circa 2010, and then retro circa anything that is not uh, in your face extreme. Uh, let's see here, Ben. What does Steven say? Steven says, uh, "I don't know if I really care if fidelity fidelity increases any more, but I would like to see dynamic changes in gameplay Im- implemented on a grander scale." <clears throat> now we have the Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor. And the really interesting uh, psychological stuff they pull with the camera angles in Arkham Knight. Uh, Imagine what they could do with horror games if they followed through these ideas deeper. Amen, man. Yeah. Like, I I don't care what anybody says. A system getting more powerful can make for new and better types of gameplay right look at my like mm-hmm. my like the, my time word example for this is dead rising you could not have done dead rising and had it still be the same game you know on a playstation 2 or or an original xbox in fact we mm-hmm. saw them try and do that with the wii which was you know last generation hardware like the ability to keep track of that many different things on a screen made that game what it is you know, just like mm-hmm. the Nemesis system makes that game what it is, and you know, et cetera. Like there is something that you can dedicate those those extra cycles to. Um, I, I I'm not itching to to see VR, you know, take main stage. I think it what you need is really good ideas, and then VR happens to be the best way to execute them. And that's the mm-hmm. only way it'll be worthwhile. I was gonna say I can agree with that sentiment, I, but I do think VR horror games it would be a completely new experience, and that oh, yeah. would be really awesome. Yeah, I yeah, I guess I I kind of feel like VR is the one exception to this rule where it's a new technology that actually could make real video games um you know add something to real video games because it does seem still consistent with the core of you know how people play games and what they are. Yeah, um, imagine the effect that you would get playing Arkham Knight or playing uh was it the uh, playable demo or whatever for Silent Hills oh, P- P- on T- VR. Yeah. yeah, that'd be amazing. Hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I, I would want that really bad. Like I would love to play Amnesia with with uh, with, with an Oculus or whatever because so I... you could actually look at the monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, David, what's yeah. Allison say? Allison says I won't be satisfied until I can explore Lordaeron or Yarnum on the Star Trek holodeck. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. Like... Yeah, but then every other episode, it would malfunction, and you'd be trapped inside, or you know, or release uh, Doctor Moriarty, or you know, some other shenanigan. Moriarty, what are you doing in Lordran? And you make more sense in Yarnum. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not right at all, Moriarty. 
<laughs> you don't fit here. <laughs> this, uh, so yeah, this is this is becoming bizarrely VR centric. But like that kind of like the 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 Steams or or Valve's Vive or Vive or whatever it is VR mm-hmm. kind of seems to be the closest to the holodeck because it does require like a dedicated room. To, mm-hmm. to to run like that so maybe i don't know like just load the mesh in from lordran and make it happen i saw i yeah. saw an article um that that there is some kind of event space going on that's going to use uh vr and kind of like you described just be a big empty room or, or have a custom set set up um but every you know you like go in with a team of people everyone wearing vr goggles and kind of interact um, in real space, but everyone kind of also in the virtual world together. I, th- I think we covered this I before. It's called The cool. Void, and it's going to be in Utah. Hmm. Yes. Did I? Maybe that's the week I missed? Maybe. Yeah, I, maybe. I remember vaguely speaking of something like this. Or I could have talked about hmm. it on air. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what uh i mean so so for something like that like what i want is to see like a demonstration of the technology which says even though you are in like a uh, a room that has a finite space whether it's you know 10 by 10 20 by 20 like there are walls and a door and if you walk far enough in one direction you're going to hit the wall i want to see like what they can do to trick your body into by following visual cues and not just spatial cues to feel like you're walking in a straight line, even though you are actually um, avoiding hitting the walls. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see that. I want to see that happen. I don't, I don't know what it would take, but hmm. Walls and covered with high spiders. hyperbolic space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. So you just need so you know, like a, like a toroid kind of, kind of shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Walking around the space donut. Um, let's see dennis what does phil say phil says i hope that more small companies put out gems larger companies start taking bigger risks and we stop worrying about 1080p in games and start focusing on new ideas but most of all i'd like the gaming community to stop being toxic yeah was that a slow cut i can i can get behind that no no i i i I knocked over something on my (laughs) desk thankfully it was not a beverage yeah no, I mean, like, maybe it's not the games themselves that need, uh, well, okay, there are things about the games themselves that are probably, mm, you know what, I'm not even going to go, I'm not going to walk in that direction. <laughs> but yeah, the community thing is is good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like, that first part just kind of seems to be, like, what's already naturally kind of happening, though, with AAA. Really? With, with AAA. No, I, I, I mean, for real, AAA is imploding it seems like it's not really doing as well. And you have a whole bunch of developers who are quitting their AAA jobs in order to start their own, to start their own independent stuff. Like it's not happening as fast as I think people would want it to, but like AAA does seem to be not doing as great. Yeah. I I know. It just seems to me like it'd be it'd more accurately be lots of, you know, indie developers coming together to make whatever game they want as long as that game is a puzzler or pixelated platformer that's your uh that's that, that's your view <laughs> yeah no no i mean like play like like for real like that's the like you don't like those kinds of things but there the, there is a market for that oh yeah yeah but i i still feel like uh you know ultimately just saying that like i i don't know i i don't think that just uh the entire genre uh collapsing into what indie uh developers you know echo chamber think is cool uh is is in any way a good good development hmm. Hmm. i mean there's there okay there are things that can only be done by really large teams and for that reason i think triple a will have a place um, it's just I, I think that we need to start looking for the new things that can only be done by really large teams versus reiterating the things we've already already discovered, which I, which plays to Phil's kind of I want big companies yeah, to exactly. start taking bigger risks. Yeah, I get heartened by companies like Platinum 
right? Like they make stuff that is grandiose. They make stuff that is big and stuff that is, you know, really action heavy, like, like you would like David. Um, but they are not so big and not so entrenched that they're not afraid to do something really, really weird. And in fact, as a company, their entire ethic seems to be, let's go to the place and the publisher and kind of the subject matter that is best going to let us do what we're good at. Yeah, sure. or look right. at Gorilla launching out into a new IP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Franz says, I will second the Nemesis system from Mordor, uh, but I want it combined with the Simulate Everything system from Dwarf Fortress in a nice, usable package. Um, I've been dreaming about that since the late 90s, convinced it would be a, the, it would become the norm next generation when the computers would be powerful enough. Cressy's going to be here. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> And that's you should mention Friday. he said that, not you. <laughs> yes, the, 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 I, I am yeah. quoting Franz on that, so don't worry. What is what is the simulate everything system? No, no, just to like how great how granular Dwarf Fortress's uh, simulation gets, like in terms of uh, just keeping track of a bunch of stuff, which it can do because most of it is you know ASCII kind of kind of things. Yeah, okay, so like it. Dwarf Fortress will um, establish like an entire you know thousand several thousand year history of your procedurally generated world and like i want to say it'll um you know like keep track of like uh the physics of uh liquid flows so you can create volcanoes and stuff like that and uh you know even though it's this society building game it's also you know each individual person is actually doing their thing and you know bar fights can eventually you know spiral out of control and lead to the downfall of an entire civilization basically what peter molyneux promised fable would do (laughs) i'm not being glib like 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 in in reality like that is the whole promise of you'll plant a tree when you're a child and it will be a full-grown tree when you're when you come back as an adult yep yeah okay cool yep uh ben what does david say David says, I'm honestly good with graphics where, at where they're at at this point, so I'm just wanting the systems to be capable of bigger and better things. I want Elder Scrolls Seven to be a true living world where no two games are the same and the events are all dynamic and non-scripted. Yep. So that's a, that's a second. Yes, <laughs> definitely. There, there, there are some themes here. Um, David, what does Sean say? Sean says, Kingdom Hearts 3 will be teased again. This time featuring the Marvel <laughs> Universe. I actually don't see anything too dramatic in five years. I'm hoping for a couple of exciting new properties, but most of the games will probably end up being remotes or insert title X, the Revengeanist. Once yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> insert title X, the Revengeanist one yet. Yep. <laughs> I think I would play any game whose uh, tagline was the Revengeanist one yet. Hmm. <laughs> I bet there would be one in the indie space. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's see here. And uh, Dennis, uh, let's ride out with Christopher's. Chris says, uh, I'd just be happy with better female characters slash leads that have great writing behind them instead of impossible boobs in front of them. Quippy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we talked about that a little bit. What was it, last episode, where this is possibly the most representation that female characters have had in the, um, uh, what's, what, what's, who's it, in the E3 main stage at the, at the keynotes mm-hmm. and whatnot? Things are slowly yeah. getting better. Yeah. Yeah. The, the industry is responding. It is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, who, who, who knows when those games come out, they could be terrible and regressive and whatnot, but, you know. We can we can we, we we can hold out hope. It's baby steps. We can't. We There's can't, still yes. time to mess this up. <laughs> yep. We can't Beyond like... eyes might be very sexist. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't want that to happen at all. No, I know. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. So one one thing I wanted to mention too. One thing I'm looking forward to is hopefully the development of more auteurs in the video game industry. Mm-hmm. Like. like uh, more so as like how the movie industry is now. Like it would be interesting to see if the uh, video game industry follows suit. It's really weird, right? Because after Shigeru Miyamoto goes away, and uh, like who knows what Kojima is going to do after his split with Konami, like there isn't much of the old guard. 
mm-hmm. you know, kind of left around. Like you have a couple of, I mean, Tim Schafer is the one who's brought up, but like in terms of stuff that has been around just forever and ever, like it's, it, you know, outs- again, outside of the indie space, I don't know if that is discounted from, from talking about, but like in, you know, in, in massive development, you, I don't know if you see an awful lot of that. Mm-hmm. Like who would you identify as like a currently, a currently operating auteur that you would like to see more, like m- more of, I guess. Uh, what, Uday, the creative lead for Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, Ada, yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, I could see that. Like, I would say, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to identify. Can like, you, even can you define um, auteur in this context so at you... least? Even though, even though I wouldn't want more of these games, like there's no, it doesn't seem like there's like a Michael Bay of the video game industry, you know. Mm-hmm. Not Wait. saying that that's a bad thing. But, Wait, yeah. isn't that like the entire uh, Call of Duty team? Yeah, but there's no single person behind it, you know. Yeah. Not and again, not saying that like it needs to be a single person, but I would just be curious to see if that develops. Yeah. Hmm. that's one of those things like the bigger a game gets the more people who were involved and kind of the more it becomes like kind of just a a corporate expression not to sound like a like a crazy person but you know just like yeah well this this is very much you know crafted by market forces or whatever and not so much by a single person right like there are names like like west and zampella but they're not with call of duty anymore they are toiling in obscurity at respawn to be fair, isn't that kind of how things have traditionally been? I mean, stories are always products of, you know, a large num you know, environment community, you know, a large numbers of authors. I mean, specifically at the level that we're talking about. Like, I don't know that you could say that Assassin's Creed story is is so much like one person singular expression, more so than something that is not just crafted by like the market pressure of who's going to who's going to buy what, but something that is tested and into the ground in terms of what is going to sell to the most people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, people are going to make things. And the, the, the things that we know about that are popular are there because people wanted to see them and therefore there are more of them, et cetera, and et cetera. What I'm talking about is something that is kind of more systemic than that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And like, then my, my thought on, on what I want to see in the next five years is, I, and I think I mentioned it sometime when we were talking about the next console generation, is just ease of use i want everything to connect to everything seamlessly so mm-hmm. i don't want to have to plug my station into the tv with wires i want it to just set it, set it next to it and have it connect um i want more of the you know you can play games on your vita um that would run on the ps4 i just want that to be kind of that's the standard um and 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 have things work that way yeah i kind of want consoles to go away yeah. In place of what would you like instead? Go on. No, no, I just I, I kind of I kind of don't I think that consoles are just kind of an artificial construct <laughs> the, 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 that uh that that has ceased kind of helping people actually play the games as they're coming out. And instead it has become this, you know, it, it, it has outlived its use, usefulness but you know beyond um just artificially balkanizing the way people kind of enjoy these things. Yeah, it's, it, I the console life cycle is probably the best thing that it has going for it. In that, I can I can buy a PS4 and know that I'm good for ten years. Yeah. Whereas I, I don't think I could say the same thing about a computer. See, it would be interesting to do a comparison and see, like I I don't know somehow define like hit games and see what your chances of not being able to play a hit game on a computer because you aren't keeping up with the requirements versus not being able to play a hit game on a console because it's con- it's exclusive to the other guy. Yeah, just like just pick this but, game yeah, and then do, and then do a uh, and then do a comparison. Like, and I don't know, like like it's it's almost kind of becoming a, th- a thing where it's it's not a, it's not even really a factor anymore. Did you pick the wrong guy because everything comes out on everything? And at that point, I don't know what the point is. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, you know, like the, the, then the distinction just becomes: well, we're going to have more content that uh, is exclusive to one or the other, um, that is going to be split off even further into, uh, you know, retailer-specific kind of stuff. Like, I don't want retailers to even be involved, really. 
but this yeah. is like this I, isn't yeah. this isn't new i'm not like pinning the theses to the front door this is stuff that we've said all the time but like i enjoy my playstation 4 but like i would not be sad if there was no playstation 5 i would be sad if they if there if there were no more handheld games like no more dedicated handheld. yeah i guess that's a console place that makes sense yeah just because actually having a dedicated machine that does that, I, I don't know that mobile games are going to replace replace that for me personally. David, how about you? I think a little bit for me, it depends on whether we're talking where do we think games are going versus where do we want them to go. Um, I, in terms of where we think we're going, I was a little shocked to hear someone uh, thinks this is the golden age. So um, I don't know. I don't have a lot of confidence in where games are going. Um can, can, you, can, like can you quantify that? It, I, I, I feel like more, more their golden age. This more seems like the the um, period where a um, genre or media suddenly becomes popular and kind of sells out. Like, like, can you? I'm, I'm not pressing you just for the sake of pressing you i just want to make sure i understand what you're saying can, can you can you like quantify that even even more like can you can you name a specific example of of something that you feel does that i would say you know uh the decreasing support for like uh modding communities in uh big games um you know decreasing control uh players have over their games and in terms of you know being able to uh choose what uh, play modes they want in uh you know act uh you know multiplayer games and things like that that's that i mean that, um, that, that that's really weird because like with steam workshop being enabled in more different kinds of games than before like i don't think that modding has ever been more accessible um yeah i i i don't know um i haven't seen it much on games i care about honestly like uh it seems like it's mostly indie games which Probably the less I say about my opinions on indie games, the better. I feel like, uh, well, I guess I feel like indie games are getting real echo chambery, where they're no longer really making interesting games. They're just making the same popular genres over and over again with minor changes. Like what? What genres are those? Uh, I would say like roguelikes, uh, Daisy clones. Um, Probably, uh, you know, puzzlers and pixelated platformers would be like ninety percent of them. Um, De- De- Dennis, since you wrote the question and you phrased it, why would uh, like, 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 can you explain what you mean by the golden age? Yeah, just that there there are so many games that are so accessible uh, right now. Yeah, that 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 are like just in terms of it is easy to get a hold of more games than you could ever play. It, yeah, it will, and, and easy to get a hold of more quality games than you could ever play. Yeah, I mean, even, even though that that also comes with mountains of shit. So, well, yeah, like, and you just have to hope that the that the good stuff is going to is going to rise. Like, what would you like to see instead in, instead of that kind of stuff in the indie space? I guess I I kind of two things probably cro- probably uh, you know a combination of what um, you know Phil said and then uh, what we had several people say with uh, you know I think. Um, increasing focus on kind of uh like what steven said the uh you know kind of dynamic aspects of gameplay but like specific genres and, and I, stuff that you want to that you want to see um ac- action games uh action and, and i guess more adventure games that aren't dumb what's uh well, like what what's what's dumb it's just dumb i i don't know it's just it seems like every action game i play is basically a michael bay movie but there's no auteur yet <laughs> it kind of, I, I kind of liked uh you know kind of like what we talked about i guess our viewers weren't there but you know when we're uh getting ready for the e3 thing you know one of the you know to a large degree kind of the the most recent mad max movie is kind of my ideal you know the fact that you can make a legitimate action movie and still have it have a relevant uh you know a meaningful plot and characters and um things like that hmm. Uh, doesn't seem to be present in games. I would say overall, though, uh, to um, you know, maybe my biggest thing would be I'd like to see um, the video game community um, abandon the idea of games as art. Okay. Who? I think it's a a dead end. Not 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 to the degree that I don't think video games aren't art, 
but I feel like it's I feel like it's just an an artificial focus. You know, it's it's kind. Of, I feel like it's basically like someone thinking that you know if they uh, drink wine and wear a suit, uh, that makes them sophisticated. Where you know people have latched on. You know, I think what really needs to be is you know people need to articulate and and make games that are important and relevant. And I feel like people have art. Uh, latched on to art as you know kind of some artificial uh you know stand in for oh yeah art's important therefore if video games are art they'll be important but isn't that semantics um uh, maybe uh, yeah it sounds like you support so the idea maybe... of video games as art but not not like billing it as a video game of art and have it not be a quality game is that kind of the yeah I, 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 I think you the don't issue want to... is you want the video to be like, hey, I'm art. I am so art. Guys, everyone, I am art. You just want them to do their thing. Right. You don't want the Ex- art to exactly. stand for artificial. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I guess... Uh, yeah, I guess also to a certain degree, I feel like some of it is... You know, it's it's sort of like, uh, you know, uh, dressing up, in, you know, a little kid dressing up in... Uh, his father's clothes, you know, to be I mean, come is, an adult. Is the word you're looking for a pretension? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, like outside of the Stanley Parable, which I know, which I know you dislike. Can you point to something that is like straight up, like pretentious and offensive to you? Like, I mean, it's like a specific title. Not really. I tend to avoid anything that smacks of that, honestly. Uh, but no, but I, I just, I just mean like, like you, you're, you're aware of the presence of them. I just want to, like, I, I, I uh, it's, it sounds like I'm grilling you. I just want to have a better, a better idea of like, of, of where you're coming from on this. He's putting you on heavy breeze. <laughs> heavy breeze. Yeah. No, I, I honestly, um, I'd, I'd have to go back and, um, and look, uh, you know, I mean, like stuff that you've seen coming out of E three that you think is like troublesome, like it's, like the, like the, uh, beyond I, eyes. I is that is that one of the ones or like Last Guardian? Like like where like where does this rest? No, I I would say La- Last Guardian would be, in my opinion, an example of what uh, should be done to it, and that it seems like it's just someone who, uh, you know, intended to make a really good, really meaningful story. And therefore, it became art. I don't know. Like, it, yeah, like, like get, getting art involved in the conversation at all definitely does, definitely does muddy the waters and everything. And, and like we talked about, like, if a game does have a message, right? Like, think about our conversation around Papo EO, right? Which is a game right. about alcoholism, right? And our conversations about is it better for that to come out? you know, and just say uh, up front, like, hey, think about it. This is about substance abuse. <laughs> how cool is it right like i think that 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 discussion about how a game builds itself and i'm probably in that camp right that says if a game comes out and and you know really builds itself with how profound it is i'm going to be very very skeptical about it i'm curious sure. about how much that actually happens i'm you know i i've said in the past that i don't understand accusations of arrogance especially when people lobby that against me because i am a person who like anybody who calls me arrogant doesn't know how much i hate myself so it's like <laughs> huh, okay well huh like the so 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 like the like the notions of pretensions or, or arrogance or perceptions of that in other people don't really don't like that that doesn't compute for me so like that's why i'm having so much trouble like speaking the same language as as you are right now and by the way i'm going to go on record again as supporting papo yo yeah, no, no, I think that's relevant, and yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I can't do a uh, uh, examples just because honestly, like I said, it's something I tend to just avoid, like the plague. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, I wonder, I wonder if that avoidance has actually led you to kind of like build up this problem. Um, and when it, when, 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 that, it, when it might not actually be. be there because like there are forces of this and i think that there are people who talk about things like braid or you know like when we joke around about you know like uh, think about it or whatever like that that stuff is out there but like whenever it whenever i try to pin it down like in not just in you but just like talking about anybody who would bring up um the the, the you know the pretension problem or the or kind of the mass market or we're dumbing this down or it's political correctness gone mad they're like the the, the actual examples never really never really come out it's more against specific people and specific creators as opposed to like what their actual works are 
right? Sure. What do you mean, yeah, you yeah, games? Yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and maybe this is you know kind of a uh, you know a uh, particularly um, I don't know uh, convoluted you know example of you know kind of what you're saying uh, and kind of what we discussed earlier. You know, sometimes the uh, the community and the discourse is part of the problem. Oh well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I I I could definitely see that. I think it could be very very possible that you know maybe mm-hmm. I'm reading into uh things too much so yeah. um i i i would say uh to step back a little bit to what what you're saying about um like uh Papa and yo and uh stuff like that um i i think to a certain degree my particular stance on that is um you know again i know it comes up every, i i really uh you know i kind of care about storytelling and i feel like I feel like to a certain degree, you should have a story, not a message, which I realize that's that's kind of like, uh, I know that's very kind of buzzwordy, you know, self-help business uh, book type thing. No, don't worry. Like the, the word story has lost all meaning for me. I just salt the earth, right. burn it, nothing good can grow again. Fuck anybody sure, who calls but, themselves but a I storyteller. Mean, <laughs> but you do a certain degree understand what i'm saying oh no i totally do like i mean just like uh, like okay so like so like story versus agenda right like are you perceiving there being an agenda pushed or what have you but like you really enjoyed gone home is that correct yeah would you would you say that that like 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 where did that fall on story versus agenda because i know people whose lives and views were changed because of that like like but like i'm, oh, not, yeah. I'm, not, I, I'm not just blowing definitely... smoke Without a doubt, say my views were changed because of that. Um, but I would say I think my views were changed a bit because of it, because of the story. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, maybe, again, like like you said, like, I'm not sure I could come up with an example. So maybe this isn't um, a uh, valid thing. But I feel like you're... Your message or your game or whatever only only matters if people care about it and people are going to I feel like people care about gone home uh you know uh, because it had a story because it you know showed them the message not because it told them the message I yeah. don't know yeah I mean like I would just be curious like if you did do any kind of like searching around this and you found something that was like aha here like you know check this out because sure. like you know like, like again i'm gonna throw the, i'm gonna throw stanley par- to parable out of this not just to move the goalpost but because i think that the perceived message behind that is that either this is that like this is a bunch of stories that add, add up to nothing or the like the message or agenda is hey look how clever and quirky and smart we are i th- I, th- I think that i think that that like that that might be the actual message that you're that that, that you are that you're sensitive to is the look how qu- clever quirky yeah. and smart we are and so I, I would sure. like to I would like to see if there if, if there's an example of something you know out there that actually would you know that 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 does trip that out. And I realize that I'm saying go go forth and find something you hate, but <laughs> I just I just I just want to know like I like I want to get that there because sure. you know no, we're having definitely. conversations no, about think, this stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a very very valid. I think that's extremely valid. So cool. I can't find any games that I hate. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Damn it! I failed. The world is upside down. <laughs> Why is everything so good? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's been multiplayer. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for uh, for for uh, contributing. If you would like to uh, uh, participate in these, uh, these they happen primarily on Facebook. Uh, go to uh, facebook dot com slash the level podcast. And Dennis is kind enough to put those up um, every week, um, except when he's not here. And sometimes I do a uh, I do a free play because again, breakfast for dinner. <laughs> it's it, it's kind of nice. My absences line up, you know, almost like a good rhythm for when we do free plays. So it kind of <laughs> works itself out. Um, also, suggest questions, please, because um, I'm I I I, uh, I would love to have you do my work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm also interested yeah, in what you guys play. are interested in <laughs> discussing. So yeah, if you have any questions that are like, oh man, I would really love to see that posed to the larger community, uh, go to uh, duckfeed.tv/contact. And uh, use the button for the level there. The grind. It is now time for the grind, where we talk about you know the games we've been playing over the past period of time or so. Dennis, because you were away, I'm going to throw to you first. Yeah, I was on vacation, which means I got to play a lot of games, mm. um, almost exclusively on the Vita. Um, and I, I played two new games on the Vita. Um, the first is Counter Spy. 
um, which is like a 2D uh, stealth platformer that turns 3D for shooting segments, which is uh, which is really cool. Have you guys heard of this game before? Um, no. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what you just said. Yeah, it's it's really cool. So it's 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 got like a um a Pixar kind of cell shaded cartoony look to it. It looks um, which it, is, it, it looks like Team Fortress art, right? Yeah, almost almost Team Team Fortress with just like one step closer to cell cell shading. Mm-hmm. Um and and during the normal course of gameplay, you're you're oh, in a two D yeah. environment. Yeah, this is it's you know it's a Vita exclusive, so I'm confident no one has ever heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks but, amazing. Um, it is amazing. So yeah, so you during the normal like platforming sections of the game, uh, you're in a 2D environment, um, but then the 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 environments are kind of animated in 3D, and you'll like run in front of rooms that have like people in them or depth to them. And those people can actually see you and you can, that will actually like run towards you and come to the 2d environment. Um, or, uh, you know, or, um, if you, if you get behind certain pieces of cover, the camera will actually shift. So that's looking along the corridor that you're running, uh, down. Um, and that will also be a 3d environment for you to have shootouts in. So the game is all about kind of moving from one stealthily, just not being seen. And then if slash when you are seen getting to cover quickly and, and taking out the people who saw you. Um, so it, it, uh, it's, I I haven't seen that kind of switch between 2d and 3d. So seamlessly done before, which is, which is a lot of fun. There are sequences like this in Metroid other M. Oh, really? Yeah. Where, where, where by, so like normally you control Metroid other M by holding the Wii remote and it's kind of like sideways NES controller position, but there are screens where when you point the remote at the screen, it will, um, it will, it will go into like a, like an over the shoulder shooter mode where you can kind of like take shots. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And so Very like similar to this then. Yeah, so this is this, so this is like it is a 3D environment that you are navigating in like a 2 and a half D kind of way, except it's a little bit like Killer 7 where it's putting you on a line and you are just kind mm-hmm. of taking the 2D plane for the stealth and then the 3D plane for taking out stuff in the background. That is really cool. I love the body language in the game, uh particularly of your character. Oh my god, it's perfect. Yeah, they they really really nailed that piece. Like he he kind of he slinks <laughs> that's that's the best right, way to, right. to put it. Uh, and just it goes yeah, downstairs. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. he tumbles yeah. downstairs. Yeah. Well, like, uh, you know, when you land from a jump, you'll like land in this like exaggerated crouch type of thing, and yeah, it's it's, I, it's really cool. Like, it's it's clear that a lot of love went into animating that main character. Um, a little less so with the with the enemy soldiers in the game. Like they feel much more generic, but they're they're there to be kind of uh, cannon fodder. So that's that's fine. Um, the the overall story is also real amusing. So it's set in like a pseudo Cold War kind of era, where both sides of the power equation are in an arms race to nuke the moon. <laughs> don't, don't know how they got on that. Track. I mean, that's Moonraker, right? <laughs> to be fair, yeah, the moon totally had it coming. <laughs> And also, so there's a skit on Mr. Show with Bob and David where they joked about that idea, but yep. they found out later that was an actual idea the U.S. government had briefly. Yep, totally. <laughs> to affect the tides before everybody realized. Wait, oh. why? Uh, to show military dominance is what I heard. Yep. <laughs> and it's it's great. The loading screens just list the project names of all the dumb shit that people considered doing during the war or during the Cold War. Oh, the, the, so men, like the many hysteric ghosts and stuff. Kitty. Yeah, so the acoustic kitty was like implanting microphones in cats mm-hmm. to listen in on Soviet conversations. Like, and I know that one's an actual thing, so I assume all the other ones were too. But yeah. they get pretty ridiculous. My uh, my, um, my my favorite one of those, just if you can permit me a digression from World War Two. Yeah, please. I forget what it was. It was it was the Germans who were trying to train dogs to go against the Soviets, or the Soviets who were trying to train dogs to go against the Germans. I forget which one. Um, I'm going to say it's the Germans because it's funnier. And so what they what they mm-hmm. did was they they they, they t- took dogs and they put um explosive vests on them right like little cute explosive vests and, and and we tried to train them to run up under tanks and then so they so they could detonate the you know detonate and blow up the tank right and so mm-hmm. they, they you know they trained them and they they, they 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 got it they got it working just right for as monstrous as that plan is um except for the fact that they that they trained them on german tanks <laughs> so they didn't know to go after the opposing tanks 
That's Whoops. fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, and if if I remember correctly, it wasn't like remote control. It was basically the bombs had a lever on the top so that when the lever hit the bottom of the tank, they'd go off. So this was more like they released the dogs who immediately turned on them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, That's it crazy. was it, it was the Russians actually who were doing this. I think. Let me look here. Uh, they were dogs who were trained uh, against German tanks. It was the Soviet Russian uh, military force that was uh, that was doing this against the Germans. So I was I huh. I had that reversed, but continue. I'm sorry, but they actually like they they, they use that as kind of like the, the the interstitial like fun fact kind of stuff. Yeah, which is which is cute, and it's just like that level of silliness that just kind of pervades the game, nice. um, like all all the signs um, in the in the background as you're crawling through. So the, so the story is that you're a spy who has to <clears throat> kind of play both sides to get enough information to stop the 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 war. Hmm. Um, and so you can it, it's it's an interesting it's it's a great example of a game that uses persistence without being a roguelike. Um, because, and it's even got randomly ge- generated levels. So there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of roguelike elements to it, but it's, it's a definitely not a, a roguelike. Um, but anyway, so, so each, each side has a DEF CON level, um, where, you know, if, if you, um, get caught by cameras or if you die, um, or, you know, a couple other, uh, um, factors that could happen, it will raise their DEF CON level. And that lasts between missions. And so you've got to kind of manage the def, DEFCON level. Um, if it ever gets to one uh, during a mission, starts a countdown clock, and you have to get to the end of the level. And, and you know, normally you move pretty methodically through these levels. But if you ever trigger the countdown timer, you have to get to the end of the level before it goes off, hmm. which causes, you know, suddenly turns this into just like a hectic mad dash um, to try to get to the end. Jackety sax starts um, playing. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, but that that's that's a, a lot of fun. And then when you get to the end, when you get enough information to launch a strike, you have to do the final mission on the side that has the highest DEFCON level. Um, so you can choose to kind of do a couple extra regular missions to try to lower the DEFCON level and, and make the final mission a bit easier. So it's a nice, it's kind of a little, um, I don't know if it's quite a meta game, but it's a nice little system in the game hmm. um, that you actually have to think about, you know, hey... I just jacked up the DEFCON level really high on this on this um, you know this superpower. So maybe I need to do a mission where I, I don't take any risks on that side and just kind of get through it. Um, and and do you can do certain things to lower it. So if I if I just do a mission to f- do those things and forget about gathering intelligence for for a time, that will help me out later on. Which mm. is it's kind of cool to watch that play out. Um, is yeah. It, the the only oh, go ahead. Is this kind of structured like a runner? No, there's 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 not a sense of momentum to it. I, I, um, I suppose, but I mean, like structured like runner in terms of you are kind of like taking a mission as it goes, and it gives you a couple of different like objectives to you know, to go. But it's like okay, this is this kind of base, and this is this kind of base. But it's effectively uh, kind of like pr- proceeding like a like a runner would, like a jetpack joyride or a uh, or a cannibal. Oh, so like it, it's building the bases as you go. Yeah. Um, kind of like there's there's an end point to every level um but the the level is kind of procedurally generated um each time you play and it felt really good because it it never felt like a, it was just blocks being plugged together like everything felt pretty cohesive um so while i know there was were some rooms that were repeated um particularly like the final area i think there's only like two or three variants of it but during the main meet of a level um i didn't really notice that it was being procedurally generated which i think i would count as a success mm-hmm. um yeah so uh, that the the game the the two complaints i have and the second one isn't even really a complaint uh the first is uh that if you if you massively screw up and trigger an entire room of people without taking anyone out the game can like slow down a bit hmm. like it's the it's not designed for you to take on a firefight of a full room, either in technically or in just the style of play. Like you should be kind of slowly taking people out one by one. So the system, I think, got a little overloaded the times where I just screwed up and alerted to everyone to where I was. <laughs> um, the second thing is that I, I beat this game in under three hours. Um, oh and so 
that now I like I said that's not even really a complaint for someone who doesn't have much time to play games that was the perfect length huh. like I enjoyed what I played it was a complete experience and I didn't I, I, I didn't leave craving more um, technically I could go back and play it again and it would be all different levels and stuff but I, I don't really see a point in that um, so it, it is super duper short hmm. but uh, I think it, it, it accomplishes exactly what it wants to and then it kind of you know, steps away from the microphone, which is which is perfectly <laughs> fine by me. Nice. Or it's just slightly uh, longer than James Bond movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cool thing is, like, you said this was Vita only, but no, it's actually on iOS and Android as well, along with PlayStation no 4 way. and PS3. Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah, you know, it, it was a uh, PlayStation Plus game uh, a little bit ago. Yep. That's how I got it. That, yeah, that's how I, I got it as well, and I assumed it was a Vita exclusive. But okay, great. Then I mean, then go play this game. I assume the Vita is the place to play it. Yeah, I think so. They, there aren't really any touch controls to speak of. Yeah, but it just it kind of lends itself to that um, small screen experience plus buttons. Nice. What else you been playing? Cool. You said you had another one. Yeah, um, I dipped into Hohokam, and that is a wonderful whatever it is. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I played probably about a half an hour of that when i got it on ps plus i i yeah. i don't know what the fuck yeah like I, I i screwed around in a couple different places and then i figured out that i could do like i, I made a bunch of bigger things smaller by hitting them and i, I <laughs> there were a lot of them and i and i got all of them and then i think something happened but i'm not really sure what i got for it happening or if if it actually anything happened or I just found something that I hadn't seen before. And then I went to another area and did completely nothing and got a reward for that. So it's it's like it's all it's all like the music is a lot of fun. Um and it's it's kind of that they they it's one of the games that you have to play with headphones on just to get the full experience. Just like to, to, um, to describe what you're actually doing in this game because I don't know that I could you are you are guiding a sperm <laughs> through but like no it's like it's a little eye with a tail behind it mm-hmm. um that that you just kind of maneuver like you're not even like you just move the stick and it you yeah. follows the stick and mm-hmm. so you're just kind of it's, it's these really colorful imaginative environments um and there's there's kind of parts of the environment that are interactive like one of the more cohesive ones that i got was it looked like there was some kind of celebration or wedding going on and if you if you if you rode over the bride who was lower down in the level she would hop on your back and you could take her up to the wedding and then you could like dip into this sea that was in the bottom and these lobsters would fill up wine glasses and pass them out to the crowd and like if if this sounds completely weird and nonsensical it's because it is yeah uh, it just, so it, the it, message you know, is that it, errant sperm can lead to a wedding <laughs> <Maybe basically. laughs> I, I, I don't know how to con- like how to confer this gesture so i like i'm just gonna have to say something along with it boom <laughs> like yeah that's a good one like i just I, I did like i did like a like a combination like hitting you on the shoulder with like the like the hand explosion kind of thing i don't know it was, yeah. it was very supportive <laughs> basically i was saying good on you david <laughs> gesture <laughs> chat fair enough <laughs> gesture chat um so yeah I, I i messed around with it like you cole for like a half hour and i was like i like it's it's definitely like an experience game like it's a, it's a, it's meant to just be kind of derped around in and and you just kind of find what you find and it's all very cute and amusing yeah. but it was it was almost too directionless for me yeah i didn't even know there were other like modes yeah go figure would you say i mean i i have no idea so i'm literally like trying to envision this as you describe it um would you say this is like almost a surreal or like an abstract like you know, not not necessarily meant to you know have any point. Just you know, just as kind of abstract. You know, here's a cool thing. Yeah, it's like it's like halfway between abstract and Adventure Time. Like it, it, <laughs> like like it is like that. You're not really that far off because it is meant to kind of like engage you and just make you say, "Huh, it's kind of cool that that happens." Oh, that's <laughs> like, cute. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me see so here. If, if you if you have a lot of time to just kind of 
And you want to have just float around in a magical little fun world where you don't really understand anything about what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, play Ho Hokum. Yeah, the first thing that I did after playing Ho Hokum was Google what Ho Hokum, what the fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like i just don't it just it's inscrutable to me i don't i don't know <laughs> yeah it's like i said it's a it's a great whatever it is i mean you know? i am systematically trying to eradicate all joy from my life however yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah it, like it, it it is uh like it's a screensaver essentially yeah it's it's yeah. a playable screensaver that's a that's a yeah. good way to think about it no. Um, so I did that, and then really quickly, I um, I played uh, eighty days again slash red hmm. eighty days again. I'm not I'm not sure That's which play. verb I call is it more. A play. Yeah, um, and that I, I can. So it's my third time playing through it. It's my second time actually finishing the plot all the way. Hmm. Um, I was over time this time, and this time instead of under time, uh, missed missed my deadline by by a week. Hmm. But I, I continue to be amazed at just the diversity of writing. Like, I even took routes that I would categorize as relatively similar to ones that I had taken before, and the story was completely different. Like, uh, I both both of the most recent times I played, I, I went on the Trans-Siberian Express. The first time, I it was all about kind of like the spy and and getting papers to get through a military checkpoint mm. and then the second time there were i you know there were some rumors about um you know a military checkpoint but that never developed and instead i had this like diversion into china and it was just it was crazy like i, I had a boxing match um, I, had a date with <laughs> I did the boxing death, match literally you, a, yeah. a date with who i'm sorry <laughs> i said i had a date with death literally <laughs> Um, it was it was Mardi Gras, and I I um, <clears throat> met up with the guy who uh, who was being death for Mardi Gras, so nice. that was fun. Um, yeah, there's just it's I I continue to be amazed and delighted by that game, and 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 have not found the same thing twice. So, was this due to random chance, or did you make slightly different decisions that led to different outcomes? I'm almost certain that it's slightly different decisions. Like I, I don't think but... I don't think the game is completely randomly generating the story it's it's way way too designed and constructed for that it's just amazing that they actually like have different stories for all these different combinations of choices that you can make okay yeah. cool i want to see one of us try and succeed to do the the, the north pole route because I can't even that out. Expansion? yeah yeah that that's one that came out ben after after the uh after the like it was dlc essentially like a free update that came with it i i i can get there like you can you can get up there but i've never managed to not die horrible horrible death <laughs> and as far as i can tell that is the only that is the only route that i've ever been on where death is a possibility mm. interest yeah huh. so it's yeah i did so i when when you had talked about dying the last time we talked about this, I had assumed that every single time you played, there would be some sort of near death experience. Right. And I never quite got there. Although you could count the bo boxing match, maybe. <laughs> um, but there was never like the, Oh, everything is, you know, we, I think I'm going to die. I'm going to make my peace with Mr. Fogg. And mm -hmm. you know, that, that didn't happen this time. Yeah. Like I've had it be close. However, it's just, it, it like, it was never as real and as definite and as like, well, your game's done as yeah. <laughs> as as in the north pole and like that's the reason it's sticking in my craw so much is because it is so tonally different no matter how bad things get in these other places you kind of end up kind of poor and destitute and way beyond deadline but you can still limp across the finish line and have people be like mm -hmm. worried about where you were yeah mm -hmm. we're making fun of mm -hmm. you in the newspapers depending yeah. on how this fall it's just, yeah Arctic I, I, scurvy <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm amazed by how much is in this game. Um, so I continue to just get so much joy out of it. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's the third thing that I played on vacation. It's delightful. God, I, I will revisit it again. I guarantee you. <laughs> um, do, do you still want to pick up Danganronpa? Should, oh, absolutely. Should, should we yeah. coordinate that off, uh, off, off the air? We should. Okay, cool. Hmm. Let's see here. David, how about you? Sure. Um, I've not been uh playing a uh a whole lot um just because I've I've been traveling but um I picked up uh Darkest Dungeon. Hmm. 
So, um, so, uh, <laughs> after our previous discussion, apparently for the last three weeks, I've played nothing but indie games. So maybe that's the thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, um, hey, I forget, uh, none of you've played it yet, right? Because Cole, Cole you're, you're waiting for the, the full release, right? Yes, I've played about maybe like an hour of it, but I don't want to get too involved until it's out of early access. Sure, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I've, I actually haven't played that much more than that. Um, I've got to say, like, in terms of um, presentation style, I think this has to be, like, one of the all-around get best games I've ever played. In terms of, uh, you know, the the music is is excellent. You know, some of the best music I've pl- uh, you know I've heard in a game, and it's probably the worst part of the game's presentation. Hmm. Um. I uh. I really really like the artistic style. I guess it's. I don't know what is it. I think it's like pe- pen drawings that have, uh, you know, were then colorized or something like that. It's it's very illustrator y which um just it looks like somebody who'd really very competent at like comic book illustration and kind of stylized human figure has gone in there and just gone completely nuts there's there's an artist that it is that 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 they are very much emulating but i can't pull the name off the top of my head okay yeah and and i'd say kind, kind of the end effect of that at least to me is um your characters to me almost look like uh like paper dolls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh just in the way they end like I, like the, it's it's very much like okay, these are rigged up like like puppets. Like that is that that, that right. is a flash style animation. Right, yeah, yeah. So um yeah, it's um you know, it's just a for one thing, it's it's a really good um animation style, like just the art is very good. It's also, um, particularly in some of the, like, uh, oh, cut scenes, there's, like, the, the intro one and then, or, like, kind of the, the intro story one and then the one that plays, like, right as the game starts. Mm-hmm. Um, very, uh, very expressive, despite being pretty simple. Mm-hmm. And then I, I feel like, uh, you know, the, the game really, really does a great job of, you know, doubling down on kind of the feeling of gloom and, you know, sort of like Lovecraftian horror type of thing. Yeah, the color palette and, is tremendous. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the, the art really supports that. Yeah. So, and um, I also like, I also really like the, the voiceover. Um, you know, there's not a lot of it, but I feel like the... Yeah, yeah, the, the, the voice really kind of reminds me, uh, kind of has, uh, I feel like, a little bit of, like, a Vincent Price uh, type of vibe, but it's, you know, over the top in that way, but without coming across as, without coming across as intending to be over the top, you know, yeah. it, it, it kind of, you know, channels some of that feeling without sounding like a parody. Yeah. So um yeah so I'm I'm really enjoying it uh the the gameplay itself basically just involves uh me incompetently leading uh my uh random people to their doom. Well yeah. Uh, so <laughs> far but like you're 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 kind of marching so, you're marching through these like these these dungeons, right? And you're making right. just a bunch of very simple choices and uh like it is a small numbers RPG where you are deploying you're trying to arrange your party in a way that best fits their skills and deploy their skills in the right way at the right time and your success or failure at the different checks that it puts in front of you kind of determines like what kind of like like how it scars them mentally as you're going through it right right exactly um yeah kind kind of the two um probably the the two most unique mechanics would be um, first, that the order of characters in their in the party, um, you know, their marching order affects um, what attacks can hit them, and then uh, which of their skills and attacks they can use. Oh, huh. And um, then also, there's certain characters. For example, one of the classes is um, kind of this. Um, 
oh, this Tomb Raider type of character who's like its whole class is built around uh, jumping backwards and forwards within the party order. Yeah. And likewise, there's abilities like, you know, throwing out uh, grappling hooks that can force um, enemies out of order. So, like, you can um, pull the archers back from the back line to where they can only use their weaker melee attacks. Hmm. And then the other the other um, cognitive mechanic is um, it keeps track of your um, how much light level there is uh, in terms of, you know, your torches and then whether there's a magical effect safe in place. So the lower the light is, the um, quicker your your uh, party loses its sanity but the more you're likely to find rare items because, you know, it's easier to see things when there's no light. Okay. And when Um, you're insane. (laughs) And when you're insane. We need eyes on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's really cool. Um, Yeah, it's, it sort of um, has this weird uh, syncopated type of uh, way of, um, oh, presenting kind of uh, information and, you know, uh, kind of a lot of the the things that will happen as like turns are playing out. I uh, sort of you know we'll kind of have like call call outs and it's just it's it's a really neat package. Yeah, I'm really excited for it to come out of early access. I just don't want to throw a good effort after a bad and have anything just kind of be pulled out. Although I understand it is it is definitely like pretty much feature complete at this point. Yeah, I I think uh, primary features are complete. I believe there's a couple of um, oh classes that still need to be implemented, mm-hmm. and then I'm guessing there's uh you know probably going to uh, be some some balance uh, things going together. Yeah, I don't so much care about the balance. I want all the classes available to me. Yeah, yeah, ex- yeah. Especially since you know um, a lot of this this game to a certain degree like is meta game. You know it. Uh, so you know party composition stuff like that is the entire game. So I think that makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Anything else you've been playing in your XL? <sighs> not, not, not really. Um, no, I think I think that's it. Other than that, I've just been watching The Wire. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> like that, uh, man, if you're liking season one, wait till you get to like season two and three. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, so wait till you get so to I season real, three. I realize, <laughs> I realize this isn't the podcast about The Wire, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, j- literally just a couple of episodes in, but I'm, I really uh, like it. Again, this, this may be unfair for... Uh, me, but you know all all the all the stuff I heard about it was you know, you know about how you know realistic the story was and you know some of the you know cultural insights and you know stuff like that mm-hmm. and so like from that I didn't expect it to be just an amazing uh you know police procedural you know thriller type thing yeah like it starts with a procedural and then becomes something greater than that like ben i I feel like i'm stepping on your on your toes by by coming in and like sucking the wire's dick but it's like (laughs) (laughs) that's no uh um no it yeah it's really great because it's kind of like the antithesis of a procedural where i mean there's like a formula there but it's not you know any sort of trope it's like yeah Yeah, you have to do a whole bunch of paperwork and Mm -hmm. usually the outcome is not that great you know yeah but yeah when when i say police procedural i mean more more like the broad genre you know base you know police police you know type crime story as opposed to actually being a procedural yeah um i like the fact that it seems like um particularly um yeah i'm just getting to the part where you're starting to see that you know some of the character uh some of the police particularly are rather corrupt Mm -hmm. and i like the Mm -hmm. fact that it seems like most of them (sighs) i i like the fact that it's it's neither doing like the whole like Oh, you can totally relate with them because they had a crappy childhood, and so it's okay that they're corrupt. And you know, it's not doing that. And it's not doing just like, oh yeah, they're horrible. 
bad guys, but like they do have legitimate reasons why that why they're doing the things they're doing. Yeah. If that makes sense. And I like yeah. the fact that it seems like there's a lot of um ca- characterization. Um, particularly, it seems like a lot of the uh, reoccurring but um, fairly unimportant, at least so far, um, of the kind of uh, oh, cri- you know, kind of criminal gang members, like actually have their own personalities. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, People you know, aren't, you know, yeah. like it seems like Dr- like what you know, drug one, dealers one have the- their own motivations. Yeah, they're not like right, two dimensional. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I really enjoy that and um i just in general the uh the fellow who's the um oh uh, the kind of the, the druggie that's being their informant at least right now <laughs> i just yes he he uh he he was he was one of the characters i already loved from uh from fringe and he's pretty <laughs> amazing here too so i liked him from bob's burgers <laughs> oh who, who is he in that he plays himself in bob's burgers Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um yeah. In one in one particular episode, the nude, the nude beach episode, he shows up in uh in a in an instructional video from the health department about washing your hands. He's like, I'm so and so also knows bubbles from the wire. You know? <laughs> you just kind of give it it's just straight up him and his voice being himself as a celebrity um guest in this thing. It's really good. And are there any other T V shows you want me to talk about being really good? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I think I think we've covered it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, I, I just uh, I really want you to continue with that because I resisted the wire for very long, for a very long time, and um, I'm sad that I did. So you are you are on a roll. Go for What's it, man. What's your excuse, Dennis? I have a child. <laughs> I mean, unacceptable. There, 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 there are some lessons in there that he that Luke could probably really identify with. <laughs> don't trust the system the numbers will ruin you yeah hmm. let's see ben how about you yeah so do you want to co-op a little bit maybe yeah I let's ta- let's tag team this this uh this bad boy okay so we got we got arkham knight first on docket you you beat it i did beat it yes how do you like it or not like it <laughs> <laughs> I soured on it. Okay. Yes. So what, yeah. So what what was the turning point for you? When did you when did you check out? <sighs> okay. So I'm going to say something that's going to sound really reductive, but there's a kernel of truth in this. I don't like the Arkham Knight as a villain, even where they end up taking okay. him. But like, so I mean, it's not too terribly spoilerific to say that yes there is a character in this game called the arkham knight it's what the game is named after and and he's on the cover and yes and he's on the cover i i, I know <laughs> that I, yes that, that cover um i i don't like Wait, that's what not his... iron man no <laughs> you 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 could be forgiven for mistaking that but what the arkham knight's presence in the game does it, it he kind of like tag teams with the batmobile in order to make the entire plot around oh, we have to get to so-and-so hideout because there's a data relay where we have to hack into the so-and-so to get the data because the data is going to let us uh, to do the drones, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so playing it, like there's no one part that I can single out. Like I even really warmed up to the Batmobile after uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, l- l- listener Allison, she, uh, she she let me know about a way to toggle those controls so it wouldn't be as, as frustrating. So that's pretty good. Um, but like I warmed up. Did but- you not... Did you not like the left trigger going into the battle mode? No, no. I'd rather have. I'd rather um, toggle between the two of them, and like by doing that, you're actually able to put the left trigger to be uh, something that makes sense in a racing game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like even the Batmobile stuff, like individually, like when you're in those sections, they feel fine. I just disliked the way that that insinuated itself into a whole bunch of the game. And I feel like actually that was, that was used to substitute for a bunch of like more interesting things. Like there were large climactic battles or encounters that in city or in asylum would have been boss fights, right. Or boss set pieces or going up against a particular villain. But because everything is the Arkham Knight and his drones, it's like, okay, you're going to be in a different, but still functionally identical part of the city trying to avoid all this stuff. And once you've maxed out the Batmobile 
and have all the abilities and whatnot, that's pretty much static. That's not to say there are not encounters with the Batmobile that aren't good. There's one, especially like later on in the game. I was like, oh, yes, I wish that they were doing a bunch more of this. But like even down mm-hmm. to like the Riddler missions, I thought, OK, well, the Riddler has a whole dedicated a whole dedicated side quest, um, you know, the, this time around, as opposed to just being the, the, the trophy hunts, which are fine. But I always feel like too daunted to go to go after that. But like you are working against the riddler to rescue the uh, you know to rescue catwoman which cool like i want to get catwoman out because she's she's solid and a bunch of those missions are just races against the uh the riddler's contraptions yeah <laughs> and, and it's, it's go ahead it does take us it, it does take a step away from realism when it gets to that point but i don't, I don't even care about realism i just don't find it that interesting like i want to okay. i want to I, I I don't associate the Riddler with tests of my reflexes, you know, and mm. I, and I feel yeah, like that's, that's that's not what the Riddler is. And, and like they, and they they poke fun at that. And there are times, you know, like if that that's not everything. Like there are times where they work in actual cool Riddler, like Riddler stuff. But like I wanted them to say, okay, we're going to actually design a bunch of like set piece Riddler challenges that aren't just the walk into a new area and then find the trophy. Um, actually solve these puzzle rooms and stuff and the fact that a full half of those were these race courses which like once would have been fine mm-hmm. but the fact that it was that that it was just so pervasive just like it i don't know i felt like it was like trying to do a whole bunch of stuff at once and i feel bad because each of the each of the individual things even the combat and stuff was was good but like if i, if I had to say like I think that I like city better because for, you know, despite the fact that, you know, city was an open world, the fact that it was kind of small and compact and you were, you know, when you weren't out in the world at large, you were moving from like dungeon to dungeon, right? Like you had the courthouse with Mr. Freeze and all these different things. Like they're like, there were actual discrete places that you, that you were going. And I feel like city had like maybe three of those that I can remember. Mm -hmm. And like, in the final analysis, like aside from the, you know, some of the stuff that it does with the camera, you know, things and old friends who come back. Like, I know I'm frustrating people who are like, just say the spoiler, damn it, but I don't want to ruin it for you. Like, all that stuff was pretty good, but ended up feeling so secondary to the main thrust of what it was having you do that it was like, no, I want to, like, focus over here and actually have fun doing this stuff as opposed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah today earlier today like i was like okay well i want to go do some of the uh, like the downloadable content and so i fired up the scarecrow missions that were playstation exclusive thinking hey scarecrow i remember at the e3 announcement they were talking about oh yes we wanted to uh kind of like reinvoke the spirit of scarecrow from arkham asylum and i was like yes that was one of my favorite parts of arkham asylum so sign me up buddy and i loaded it up and in reality it was just ar challenges driving the batmobile through a hellish version of gotham city as like like the scarecrow just monologued over it and threw like lasers at me until there was a big arena battle with some tanks at the end. Hmm. It was like, man, just that's just such a it's it's such a cop out. I don't know. I kind of feel like when I was a kid and we were doing the uh, the, the the fundraisers um, and one of the rewards was a handheld machine that had a thousand and one games. But it turned out that 900 of those were Tetris variants. <laughs> like 900 yep. of the games that arkham city or that are sorry that arkham knight throws at you kind of feel like batmobile variants and again like i ultimately came to like the controls and in the moment that stuff was fine i just don't like what i traded from asylum and city especially asylum which might actually come down to be my favorite game in the series um mm-hmm. you know to you to, to get that okay yeah, I don't know. I think John Noble, uh, you know, monologuing at me would justify itself. It's fine, but like it's it's kind of it's kind of dumb, and a little bit of it gets into like think about it territory. Like you're enjoying this, aren't you? You know, you enjoy hurting them. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that's a little re- re- wasted re- potential. Maybe <laughs> uh, rebut me, Ben, because because I, I know that you you're you're more bullish on the game than I am. No, I mean, I think you do make valid points. I think some of the same uh, uh, missteps that the previous games have are here as well, where, yeah, I mean, the entire game, you are constantly following a string of, like, missions of, like, okay, now we need to get this data, now we need to get this data, now we need to get this data. 
Um, so I can see that being redundant and yeah. kind of could, could get boring. Um, I didn't have a problem with the Batmobile as much as because it seems like the narrative is a lot of people don't like the Batmobile, but I was totally down with it. I thought it was well implemented into the map as far as being able to navigate via car or by flying like oh, yeah. with with ease. You know, mm-hmm. I thought traversal was perfected in this one in comparison to Arkham City for sure. Um, but I do think I would agree that I think Arkham Asylum probably still is the best location just because of how claustrophobic and how. Um, I don't know. It, the setting was just so, I don't know, memorable or I don't know mm-hmm. how to describe it. It was just, it was just such a great setting. Yeah. Um, that I don't think that they've recaptured that with going full city in the in the previous two games. Yeah. Um, that said, I do really like most of the character missions, like either the main story missions or the uh bad guy specific missions Mm -hmm. um there are some things that are a little bit hokey like the riddler missions i can totally agree with um at the same time i don't know how they could implement a racing game you know (laughs) i don't know a better way of uh giving giving the dark knight like uh, a racing track to go around on you know yeah um so it's one of those things where i feel like they did what they could um and definitely some of those missions are better than others but yeah, I don't know. Um, I I mean, I thought the Batmobile was really good, though. I mean, I I, I basically equate it to Legend of Zelda type uh, tools, where yeah, they kind of uh, they let you use all the different functions of the of the Batmobile, and is really well integrated into yeah. puzzles. Oh, I love uh, that stuff. Like last week when I like the, the when, when they made it the Last Guardian, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like like all of that stuff was really cool. Where it's like, oh, we I, I you know I can't do this by myself. And in the missions where I'm not tag teaming with somebody, which is a really great combat thing, by the way, like in those mm-hmm. in those uh, villain specific side oh, yeah. missions where you're like where you're with yeah. Nightwing and Robin and stuff like that. Like all that stuff is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. And like the mm-hmm. Batmobile in a micro sense is really good. I just don't like replacing um, character battles or boss battles with the drone fights like that specifically is mm-hmm. the part of it. Like driving around the city as Batman. OK, fucking cool. Great. Um, <laughs> using the Batmobile to manipulate the environment and get places where Batman otherwise could not get like awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that stuff is really cool. It's specifically the arena battles that I'm really just kind of, I just did like, like just reacting negatively to. Fighting Wait, the so are there no, no just fisticuffs, uh, you know, fights against the main enemies? There, there is there. I mean, there's yeah. still like thugs on the street. No, I mean, I mean, I guess against like, like actual battles. named villains. Yeah, you. I mean, you fight bad guys. Yeah, like <laughs> you, fight bad guys. You, yeah. Don't just, you don't just uh, twisted metal them. Yeah, and in, in, in the in the main quest, like specifically everything in the movie studio. Actually, I thought that was a really good segment. I wish that it wasn't so self contained. Like like that. Like that is the okay. most boss rich um area in the game i don't know like this could just be like i could be looking at the series through freeze color uh, like freeze colored glasses <laughs> you know because like you know for just every your wife back i <laughs> know but i mean like i might just be extrapolating all of you uh, know the mr freeze uh <laughs> like like the, the mr freeze fight across all of the boss fights in the entire series which you know is not right because for every mr freeze there is also a bane and a joker from the end of asylum right yeah, you know where you're yeah, so, just, where you're just playing Toro with the guy. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it seems like there are definitely moments in each game that stand out well beyond the rest. Where it's like Scarecrow missions in the first one, Mister Freeze in the second one, and this one it seems like the tricks that they did with the camera were probably the most impressive part of the game. Yeah, and but so that is the best maybe... content for that character in the entire series. Yeah, yeah. So it it is. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's kind of a bad thing that, you know, the best parts of the games are only kind of secluded to two or three parts of the game. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I Again, I'm I'm kind of hooked on the series, so I, I think I might have blinders towards a lot of the other things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I beat it. I don't know. Like, I, I, I mainlined it. <laughs> like, for me, yeah. beating a game, you know, beating a 30-hour game in, uh, in two weeks is, like, that, that, that's commitment. Like, there was something there that, yeah. that saw me through to the end. Mm-hmm. There, so um, let me ask without... you guys this. Okay. Oh, uh, what um, 
what would you like to see this team do next? Because if I if I understand correctly, they're kind of closing the door on the Batman games as we know them. Uh, do you want them to go and do another Batman game? Do you want them to pick another superhero and do a game in this style? Like, where would you like to see them go next? Urban Chaos Green Arrow. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't want them to be trapped in superhero stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they... it seems like if... if... If they kept doing Batman games, they'd be kind of beating a dead horse. Yeah. Not to death, Boy, it though. does seem... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Damn it, you beat me to Just it. Just sending it to the hospital. <laughs> this does seem... It, it does kind of seem like this overall, like, skill set and kind of, uh, you know, thing they've developed could be, you know, extended some core genres. That's what makes yeah, it tricky so, I mean, to, to, to like to, to, to predict their future. It's really tricky because they've done so many things well that I think that somebody can look at this like every different it's like Rashomon a little bit. Everybody can look at this and pull out their two or three favorite things, and I can say, I want them to make a horror game that has a great combat system. You know, like that like hmm. that, that that's what I want because those are those are my two favorite things about this. And somebody else could look at something entirely different and say, I want an open world tank game. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm, See, not caric- I, I, I'm not caricaturing that point of view. Like that is a totally legitimate thing to pull away from this as something they did really well. Go ahead, David. I yeah. I I feel like I I I think my vote would be I want them to make uh, Alpha Protocol too. How so? I I just feel like the the basically they they have all of the uh, you know. All, all of the main things you could do in Al- Alpha Protocol, you know, show up in the Batman games, except in the Batman games, they're fun. I mean, the, 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 the dialogue is the biggest thing about Alpha Protocol, and that doesn't exist at all in, in Batman. Well, yeah, but I, I feel like all, all, the, all the actual gameplay things that kind of drug, drug down the game as a whole, uh, they've kind of got. And it seems so- like they can at least do story. So if like Alpha Protocol and Batman had a baby, it would be a perfect game. Exactly. Or a That's terrible game. That's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Any final thoughts on uh, on the old Batman? Uh, w- one thing, without saying too much, I did think they did a really good job of uh, kind of subverting mechanics that you're used to in the previous two games. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But... Uh, I, I might need the, you to give me a more specific a specific example because I have not, like, I, I played it with that in mind after what you said last week, and I didn't spot but, something that was really glaring. There, uh, there are a lot of surprises, I would say, within the game mm-hmm. of times where you would expect a certain thing to happen, but it, it's not like even, uh, it doesn't even look like it's like cutscene or scripted events, but things will very much surprise you mm-hmm. when you're when you're trying to do an action of some yeah. kind. Okay. Again, very big. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, like that. Uh, it's it's funny because the way that it moves so seamlessly between cinematic and actual in engine, you are controlling this, made it mm-hmm. hard for me to recognize that somebody who was approaching me in the cinematic actually had the counter uh, symbol yeah. above them. Yeah, I know that's something they did a little bit in the previous games. I felt like it was happening every other cinematic year. So like I had to switch yeah. myself after about the 10th hour into like Resident Evil four mode where I was yeah. pl- like watching this instead of like, se- you know, relaxing my hands and setting the controller on my lap to watch a good old movie. Like I'm gripping it like a, like, like it's fucking <laughs> death, you know, <laughs> grip it like a batarang. Pretty much. Yes. I, I have my and- prototype PlayStation three controller. And even the very <laughs> opening of the game, it's hard to figure out when the game starts. Or yep. It took me several seconds to be like, oh, <laughs> I can do stuff now. Yeah, that was a seriously parable moment, wasn't it? I was like, huh, they're really hanging on that song, aren't they? Huh, I'm looking at, <laughs> wait a minute, oh, I have to press a button. That's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> and then it's corroborated by, yeah. the, uh, by, the, by, by the narration, Mike. Man, that's yeah. such a weird casting decision. Commissioner Gordon shouldn't have a gruffer voice than Batman. Yeah, that was <laughs> Jonathan Banks is I, Jonathan Banks, so no. <laughs> I don't know. All respect to the man; he's a wonderful actor. But yeah, they they got a different guy to play Gordon. 
Was yeah. Gordon in the previous games? Yeah. Okay. I, He's, I, in both of the He's definitely in Asylum. Okay. Yeah, I, I forgot about. I forgot about him. He definitely like it's definitely he is the closest thing they have to a real Hollywood actor who is not just like a voice actor. You know, like Conrad and, you know, I guess Mark Hamill doesn't come back, but um yeah. That is the uh Yeah. Hmm. yeah it's it, it's, and, it's definitely a strange decision for me. But. And I would say the dialogue in the game, especially like the passive dialogue as you're like interacting with different characters really on point yeah. like there it, it's similar to portal 2 where there's so many scenes where you can just stop and listen to everything that the characters have to say and it's really rich yeah it'll keep going too yeah. like like the, the they're yeah. just waiting I, I love what i'm just kind of like flying over the city and you'll hear the radio chatter um it comes out of the playstation 4 controller which is nice but you're hearing the radio chatter yeah. and there's stuff that like is just begging you to go down and attack those people and they're like, mm-hmm. I was at the asylum, I was in the city, and I never saw Batman once. <laughs> <laughs> Got lucky, I guess. Yep. Yeah. It was like, okay, well, I need to go like change that guy's day. Or like, <laughs> I'm so tired of rioting. I just want to like, <laughs> I just want to sit down for a minute. Okay, well, I'll put you in a hospital bed for the rest of your life if you want. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a mean Batman. Yep. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So the the, the dialogue Wait, is, is there pretty. A nice Batman. No. Okay. There's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I had well, to think about it a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm getting ready to send it out to Gary so he can play it because I think I'm done. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think that's fair, too. Once I beat it, there's only like two side missions left. I don't think I'm going to play them, but I think I'm I'm good with what I did. Yeah. So. Yep. I don't know. I, I got what I wanted out of it. Uh, you play anything else, but I am, but I just want to say one thing. It is just a pretty, pretty game, too. Yes. Yeah. So pretty. It is It, it is like Bloodborne in that it makes a very good case for next gen. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. The other game I've been playing is The Witcher 3, hmm. and I ended up beating it this last week. So nice. I had an extended break over the weekend. So, um, but yeah, it is fine. It's. <laughs> <laughs> man i just bought this game come on oh yes yeah, i did <laughs> uh, well i mean here's the deal in my mind i'm comparing it to knights of the republic so the bar is pretty high okay you know um so it's not it's not bad but it i don't i don't know if i don't think it'll stand the test of time that coder has but again it could be an unfair comparison to mm-hmm. you compare it to a game that's as good as that so i mean yeah those comparisons uh, are all you got this, huh I mean, those comparisons are all you got. Like, you come to every game with them, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say the one the one difference I noticed between Witcher 3 and Arkham Knight is I can play the side missions on this, and they're still really, really good. Like, yeah. there's still, even though I beat the main branch or whatever, there's still a lot of content there. Mm-hmm. And so so that is something that is very nice about the game, is it, it has legs, but yeah. Yeah. So you just got the game, and I guess you just opened it on air. So that answers my question of you have not played it yet. It has a uh, soundtrack disc inside of it. Um, Mm -hmm. Pretty pleased with that. (laughs) Continue. Sorry. It's not vinyl. Um, Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, I don't have much to say about it. Mm -hmm. I I will have more to say about it as you play the game, Mm because then we can talk about some of the aspects of it. Yeah. But like like so the main story like are you happy with where it ended up like is there enough movement uh or resolution i suppose i mean it's fine i don't i i don't want to say too much again <laughs> uh um i mean it it's fine Okay, so how about this? Do you feel like do you, do you, do you feel like as an RPG like there is enough of an arc in what it allows you to do or what it empowers you to do throughout the course of the game? I mean, like do you, do you feel like your character grew? Was there like or you know because this is I mean, I guess it's the it's not the end of the story, but it's a, it's a third in a trilogy and the fiction is that Geralt started as a badass and he's going to end it also as a badass. And you're probably not going to be starting the game like slaying rats in a sewer or whatever. But like, is there yeah. enough of a like sense of, oh, I'm actually doing stuff I didn't think was, you know, kind of like I, I was capable there, of before? 
So there's not a sense of growth like there is in Knights of the Old Republic where like you go through an aspect of like Jedi training or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. There's not there's definitely not like a transformative experience like that. I mean, you do develop your skills and you do you're definitely more powerful at the end of the game than you are at the beginning, but it 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 does not feel as significant as other games. Like mm -hmm. even even yeah, yeah. Um however, that I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing because one of the cool things about the game is like uh, from beginning to end, you can do Witcher contracts where you just hunt down monsters and kill them. Nice. And that's pretty fun throughout, you know? Yeah. And the nice thing is there's always like a, a constant roster of new missions like populating uh, what you can do. And it's kind of broken down into main quest, side quest, uh, Witcher contracts, and then treasure hunts. Nice. And so all of those are pretty fun, you know? Mm -hmm. So basically the portion I beat was the main quest part, but there, you know, there's still plenty of quests in all three of the other ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, and so one of, one of the stronger features of this game is going to sound really weird, but it's the Gwent, like the game within the game where it's basically <laughs> similar to like magic Yeah. or, you know, that you can play with barkeeps or merchants around the world. I mean, that's, a whole lot of fun. So I do want to hear what your impression is of that mm -hmm. when you start playing that. Yeah. My, yeah. uh, my, my playthrough of my, my, my aborted playthrough of Kodor was kind of sideswiped or sidetracked by uh Sabat or whatever it is. Sabat. Pazak. Pazak. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, <laughs> apparently space blackjack is really fun. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that, you can lose yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Pazak's cool. This mm -hmm. one even better than nice. that so yeah does the gwent uh like playing that ever lead anywhere or you know do, is there any impact on the main game at all or other than I mean, you know, making side... you incredibly poor <laughs> the, you know you because you can win money off of gwent games so you make money um there are oh, I mean, okay side... so i'm 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 buying these cards to make money okay yeah yeah, exactly. It's an investment. No, uh, does, does it ever benefit you as directly as the card game in Final Fantasy VIII? Uh, I have not played Final Fantasy VIII, oh. so <laughs> sorry. It's fine. Um, there, I mean, there are some side missions that touch on Gwent, where uh, and there's ones where you can like play kind of like Gwent leaders of an area and stuff like that. So, I mean, the game does a little bit, has a little bit of content to support that kind of itch, more so than just running into a random village and finding a person to play it but um no i mean it's just a fun card game to play in and of itself nice. and i think the cool part is the more that you play it the more cards that you collect to strengthen your decks because you have four different decks like four different classes of decks and you choose one to play every time you play so my card stone yeah okay. that's all i got cool um i've pretty much talked about mine um i beat arkham knight over the uh over the intervening time um and uh although i soured on it it was enough to kind of draw me through um let's see here the only other thing that i played is uh her story which is the game created by the lead designer of uh silent hill shattered memories this is the one okay, where i'm super interested to hear in this oh my this gosh one. it is so good you guys <laughs> like you know, again, like just uh, uh, along with uh, L.A. Noir, this is one of those things that feels like it is custom made for me. So the conceit is you are sitting down at this kind of very outdated computer terminal, uh, searching through these videos of this woman who is giving kind of like testimony and depositions about a crime that took place um, in the spring of uh, 1994. And you kind of have a couple of videos that are brought up and you're searching the transcripts for kind of keywords on this. And so you type in murder and it brings up the top five results and it can only show five results out of whatever is there. And so what you're trying to do is look through enough of these videos and draw enough connections and refine your search criteria until you, you know, view enough material to get a good sense of what, uh, of, of what happens, of why she is being um, kind of interviewed and deposed by the police um, and to get a, a real sense of her of, of her story. I didn't mean to do a title drop there, but I totally just did. Um, mm -hmm. And this is an incredibly unique game. And I know that unique is like perfect or unicorn. There's only one of them. Um, but yeah, like I can't think of anything else that is 
even really similar to this outside of like certain board games that are dedicated to you know like reading through books of testimony or whatever like sherlock holmes consulting detective or whatever just like stuff i've heard about right but this is it's an fmv game but the performance is so good and the format is entirely built around looking at these videos and reading these performances and like just imagine me sitting down with a clipboard and using up a whole legal pad taking notes on okay on this day she's wearing this thing and she has this facial like there's a bruise on her cheek here and she's wearing a ring here but not here what's the difference between these you know like like this outfit and this outfit what is she saying with this what is the date does this contradict something she said before and i can actually upload pictures of my notes from this because I went from like <laughs> in one, in, in one set of videos, I created like two whole pages of search terms I wanted to use. And then I immediately started doing like mind maps out of this, where I had one central search term in the middle and then I did webs off of it with all the terms that kind of like led me from that. Oh, wow. And then I did individual webs off of each of those. And that actually was a very good strategy. <laughs> to like find good stuff because like a lot of them are going to be very quick dead ends but there will be searches that kind of like lead you from one step to the other step to the other step in a very like circuitous path that actually takes you into stuff that isn't directly related to the case but brings you a lot of flavor and a lot more like dimension to the players who were involved what are you playing this on by the way um i'm playing it on pc this is also available on ios i don't know about um i don't know about android as of yet um, I would check the system requirements, uh, just to make sure that you cannot play it, um, or to check and see if you can, because like, this is one of the best games I've played this year. Hmm. Yeah. It, it looks really good. It, the first thing it reminds me is kind of, uh, the, uh, heavy rain, the desk part of the game. Oh yeah. It kind of, it feels like a whole game devoted to that, which sounds mm-hmm. awesome, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean like, but it's, it's just a video of a woman talking. Like, so like what's impressive about the, about the death side of it is, you know, like for, for, for that is, oh, they can model this. It's like, you know, like, and if they tried to do this as like LA Noir or whatever, it would totally fail. But they, they take video of this woman who is an incredible actress. Like she does a fantastic job with everything that's thrown at her and they run it through all these filters to make it look like it is pulled off of a shitty degraded VHS that's been kept in archive forever. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. This, this sounds like a really good example of like starting with a really cool idea and then a video game just happened to be the best way to pull it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like just, I don't even know what the, like what the kernel of that idea is. Like what if you were watching this deposition? Like, like what if you were kind of trying to go through these, go through these cases, but you didn't have the ability to watch them in sequential order because if you could just watch the the deposition tapes and I've seen like attempts on YouTube to reconstruct them in chronological order, then obviously you would get a good picture of what happened. But that's, that's the fun of it. This is an incomplete database. And like, even though I spent like three hours playing this thing, and I got to what I felt was a satisfying conclusion by the achievements. I only saw like 75% of the video that's available in this. And even with my fanatical note taking and my webs upon webs, um, yeah, like I, I, I just like, I thought there was nothing else. And then I checked and I was like, oh, there was some line of inquiry that could actually change this. And I don't want to spoil too much about like what the, like what the success criteria is for this or what it, like what it eventually becomes. But like, this very much is a game that you play in your head and what it puts in front of you and, you know, the tools that it gives you to navigate are only are secondary to the, 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 your own personal experience as you are taking these nonlinear pieces and putting them together into some kind of semblance of order. It it I'm, really I'm excited awesome. about this. <laughs> yeah, no, like I would recommend like to like try playing it with Jen because I'm going to be very curious about what it is. It's only like $6 and I'm going to be a hypocrite because I always hate to say, well, you know, the dollar to hour ratio doesn't matter. Like, there is no excuse not to play this game. It is so incredibly <laughs> dirt cheap. Like, you know, get it, put it up on the TV. You guys play it together and try it, like, try and get to the bottom of it. Like, I want to hear what the co-op experience is because I think it was Murph on the uh, on the something awful forums who, who said, like, that he played it that way and uh, oh, cool. was, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to do that. 
so incredibly good. That's all I have to say about it, really, because there's not much you can say about the story uh, without uh, without spoiling it. Uh, do you have any other questions about that? What's the what's the playtime on it? Hmm. I put about three hours in, but I was very methodical. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like an evening play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys want to button it up? Let's do it. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, listening to episode number 111 of The Level. Um, let's see here. What do we want you all to do? Uh, go to Facebook. Um, if you are not averse to the Facebook uh, whole ecosystem, there's some cool stuff happening there. Like over the weekend, I was going through old pictures and I posted pictures of me and David from high school. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> David, did you see those? No, no, I missed this. <laughs> yeah, no, I was. Uh, we, we were we were talking on Abject Suffering about uh, clown babies, and I mentioned that I had pictures <laughs> of me dressed up as a clown when I was a baby, and also me dressed up as a clown when I was in high school. So I posted those, but that actually like unplugged the dam, and I found a bunch of old photos on my oh, on a hard yeah, drive. Yeah, I saw that. I wondered about the context for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so I was like, I just put it on there. Like sometimes that stuff happens. There may be more in the future. I don't know. It depends. Some of them are pretty embarrassing, so I might not do it. <laughs> <laughs> but... yeah yeah that that was i i particularly i i'd forgotten about that uh that sketch uh the the second one that mm-hmm. that was pretty good yeah <laughs> so uh that's a hip and happen and place to be and everybody who uh who participates there is is great i i just i love our fans they're so great uh but yeah that is facebook.com slash the level podcast um and the other ways that you can help us out it's been a while since we've had a review on itunes uh so go there and leave us a ranking or whatnot and uh that really does help us out more than you can know and uh yeah i think that's about everything aside from telling your friends am i missing something guys nope okay well, um, uh, in the meantime, I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. I've been David Mysmith at MoneySmith777. On Twitter. <laughs> and I've been Ben Merkel at Merkelizer on Twitter. <laughs> and stick around for the title. All right, so uh, it's kind of slim pickings this week. I don't know what's up, but I've got three. Let's see. Okay. Here. As did you side note, did uh, you make real us quick, was I ringtone yet? <laughs> yes, I do have it. I'll I'll email it out. John, I, I really John was asking to about it. This. I need to listen to this episode I missed because apparently Sugarbone made a comeback. <laughs> yeah, Sugar Sugar Sugarbone. He found his way back into the back into the public consciousness. <laughs> I cannot be more. Hey, as, as a side note, was I snoring earlier? Because definitely last time I remember talking we were still talking about batman oh really wow you were asleep um i, I was asleep wow you weren't you weren't snoring <laughs> i'm <Okay>. sorry david <laughs> riveting podcast oh boy wow that's a uh, huh so, so i'm sorry it's uh yeah i've yeah, been, no, been getting my sleep yeah no you've been you 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 you've been under extenuating circumstances uh yeah let's let's see here uh so the three that i've got and feel free to add to the list after i'm done um walk in the space donut <laughs> he slinks mm-hmm. not to death though with a comma between death and though yeah I, I like the first one okay walk in the space donut see I sort of like he slinks. <laughs> okay, so we have we, we we have one vote for one vote for walk in the space donut, one vote for he slinks. Ben, how do you feel? Uh, I'm agree with the slim pickings. I don't know, man. Yeah. No, no sugar bone esque titles. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like any of those could be. The title of Sugar Bone's next big hit. <laughs> nah, no, man, not to death though. Sugar Bone got dark. <laughs> what was uh, what was David's comment that you boomed? <laughs> I forget. Oh, um, an errant, errant sperm leads to weddings. Oh yeah, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't. I, I don't know about that one. I don't know I don't about know how to make a title out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. errant sperm. I mean, errant sperm would be great, but like iTunes will censor that. 
Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I'll make it. Wait, wait, will they? Oh, yeah, they they will. Huh. Uh, they, they they will um, like put an asterisk over it. I don't want to have that happen. Yeah. Well, I'll make a game day decision. That's cool. <laughs>